Uh, hello everyone, I'm Ghazal Soleimani and today in this video I'll be talking about one of our recent research how structural and functional MRI uh, can inform dual site TACS, a case, a, a case study in a clinical population and its pragmatic implications. This paper is published in 10 January 2022 in the Brain Stimulation Journal and I as the first author worked under supervision of Dr. Hamad Akhtiari as the corresponding author in this paper. Uh, if I want to summarize the main goal in this manuscript, I can say that we wanted to use brain mapping tools such as structural and functional MRI uh, to inform a type of brain stimulation technology, which is named transcranial alternating current stimulation or TACS. Uh, to uh, optimize um, electrode montage for targeting a network inside the brain, which is named executive control network or frontoparietal network. Uh, as a brief introduction about frontoparietal network, as you can see in this picture, this network has two main hub regions, one in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and the other in the posterior parietal cortex. Uh, and, and, and this network has uh, several connections to cortical and subcortical regions. And previous neuroimaging studies also showed that synchronization, coupling, or connectivity within the frontoparietal network contributes to several neurocognitive functions like executive functions, goal-directed behaviors, top-down control, or self-regulated process. And we also know that several abnormalities in the frontoparietal network were observed in different neuropsychiatric diseases, like, for example, depression, anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, schizophrenia, and substance use disorder. And in this paper, uh, we considered a group of participants with substance use disorder as a sample of clinical population. And we know that previous studies reported that people with substance use disorders compared to healthy controls showed reductions in frontoparietal connections in terms of structural and functional connectivity. And we also know that key hub regions in the frontoparietal network uh, in substance use disorder can be considered as biomarkers for treatment outcome predictions or monitoring. Uh, but um, manipulation of the frontoparietal network or modulating uh, key hub regions in this network in substance use disorder so they're using neuroscience-based technologies it has not yet been well explored. Uh, but people uh, are exploring this idea in other psychiatric diseases like depression. For example, in this paper, Emmett Etkin and colleagues uh, discuss potential mechanisms for transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS for depression. And the idea is that when we place a TMS coil over the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, we are getting able to modulate frontoparietal network and we are getting able to modulate um, other large scale networks or other brain regions that are connected to the frontoparietal network. Uh, but these types of studies, uh, I mean network level modulation in substance use disorder is not well explored yet. Uh, but our previous systematic review uh, showed that um, non-invasive brain stimulation methods like transcranial electrical or magnetic stimulation um, can be effective in the field of substance use disorder in terms of, for example, controlling drug-related behaviors like drug craving. Um, but um, the main problem is that we have a very huge variance. We have very large inter and intra-individual variability in response to, for example, transcranial electrical stimulation. And the neural substrate of mechanism of action leading to various effects um, is not clear. And, and for example, in this systematic review, uh, we reported that um, previous um, TES studies in the field of addiction medicine used very simple parameters for, for the stimulation protocol. For example, they use direct current, they use large electrode pads, and most of the time uh, the stimulating electrodes uh, were placed over dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. But this question that how we might be able to, um, to um, optimize, for example, electrode montage by targeting networks known to be dysregulated in substance use disorder is not key. And more research is needed in this field. For example, one of the most used um, electrode montage in addiction medicine uh, is uh, placing electrodes over um, DLPFC. Uh, and one of uh, one of these uh, one of these electrode arrangement, which is commonly used in in addiction medicine, is like is placing electrodes over 
F4 and FP1 locations in EEG standard system. We simulated this uh, electrode montage for 60 participants with uh, substance use disorder and Based on uh, atlas-based parcellation of the computational head models, we extracted averaged electric fields uh, from the cortical subregions. And, and, and uh, as you can see by placing a, elect a large electrode over the LPFC, we are not uh, modulating a, a, a single anatomical region. We stimulate almost everywhere inside the brain. Uh, and we cannot say that we are stimulating a single anatomical region or a specific network by placing large electrode pads over the skull. And we also checked um, other areas, uh, areas other than substance use disorder uh, that, um, that try to modulate a network by increasing the synchronization between key hub regions in a network and, and, and um, a technology which is named dual site uh, transcranial electrical stimulation uh, uh, was used for, for modulating frontoparietal network. And, and for dual site TES, um, the electrode, electrodes are commonly placed over uh, F4 and P4 or F3 and P3 based on the topology of um, frontoparietal network. We uh, simulated uh, uh, the uh, um, electrode montage that used for frontoparietal synchronization based on using large electrode pads. And again, you can see that by placing two large electrodes over, um, over for example, F4 and P4, again, we stimulate almost everywhere inside the brain. And we cannot say that we are stimulating a network. Again, everywhere inside the brain receive um, 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 current intensity based on, um, based, on the, uh, based on using large electrode pads. But previous studies suggest that for dual site protocols, another type of electrode, which is named high definition electrode, uh, can help us to produce uh, focal current intensity inside the brain. And, and, and we wanted to determine how, uh, how we might be able to modulate frontoparietal uh, connections based on placing two sets of high definition electrodes over main hub regions in the frontoparietal network. So uh, we collected MRI data including structural MRI, resting state fMRI, and task-based fMRI from 60 participants with methamphetamine use disorder. And, and craving the scores uh, based on RAS score um, were collected immediately uh, before and after scanning session. During resting state, pe people only looked at a cross on the screen and during task-based fMRI, uh, people were exposed to drug versus neutral cues uh, based on uh, using uh, a standard drug cure reactivity task with block design. Uh, and, and, and then uh, in order to, um, to, uh, to define seed regions in the frontal and parietal uh, cortex, we uh, simulated uh, computation on head models for all of 60 participants, uh, and we placed high definition electrodes over F3 or F4 for uh, defining frontal seats as uh, the location, uh, as a place that, uh, um, that is commonly used for placing high uh, for placing electrodes in dual site TACS. Uh, and and um, and after transforming computation on head models to a standard space, uh, we defined uh, 10 millimeter spheres around maximum electric fields, and then we combined um, the spheres with MNI mask to remove uh, non-brain and white matter tissues. And we for for defining uh, parietal seed regions, uh, we replicated all of these steps uh, for the parietal cortex by placing high definition electrodes over, uh, over P3 and P4 locations in EEG standard system. And then we define um, 10 millimeter spheres around maximum electric fields in the parietal cortex. And um, in, the, in our context of interest, I mean, drug curie activity task, we calculated the um, task-based connectivity or context-dependent correlation between uh, predefined seed regions based on maximum electric fields. And interestingly, uh, during drug curie activity task, we couldn't find any frontoparietal connections. Um, and um, we expected to see a frontoparietal connectivity between F3P3 and F4P4, but it seems that in, in the drug, during um, drug craving, we couldn't find, uh, we cannot find any uh, frontoparietal connections. We also checked testing a state of MRI, and again, uh, we couldn't find any frontoparietal connections based on uh, these seed regions. 
So we searched for uh, other frontoparietal connections uh, and we used our frontal seeds, uh, which was defined around F3 and F4. Um, and and, and we, based on seed to whole brain analysis, we, find, we found that we do have frontoparietal connection and, and we find a significant clusters uh, in, in the parietal cortex in both right and left hemisphere. Uh, but, but when we map these clusters over the cortex, we found that these clusters are not located around P3 or P4, P4 locations. And the nearest electrodes to these clusters were CP5 and CP6. Again, we defined, um, we, we simulated a computation on head mothers. We placed uh, high definition electrodes over CP5 and CP6. And uh, then we defined 10 millimeter spheres around, um, around the uh, maximum electric, electric fields based on uh, group level analysis of computational head mothers. And, when we calculated the, um, uh, the generalized psychophysiological interaction or context-dependent correlation analysis, uh, we, and we found that we have uh, frontoparietal connections based on new seed regions. And we also found um, positive significant correlation or uh, during resting state in between, uh, for example, F3 and CP5 and F4 and CP6. Uh, and and when we checked uh, the location, uh, the new locations of uh, seed regions uh, based on Yo Atlas, we found that new um, new parietal seed regions uh, are near the um, near uh, uh, near a network which is named ventral attention network, uh, and and uh, this network has a uh, main hub regions in the frontal. Uh, in, in the prefrontal cortex near the F3 and F4 locations, we also have parietal cortex. This network has also some main hub regions near the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex and insular cortex. Uh, so uh, we checked um, frontoparietal connections in the ventral attention network, and we found that most of the frontoparietal connections are located near the parot parietal um, parietal key hub regions in the ventral attention network. And we also found a significant, um, front of, uh, uh, significant connections between frontal seed regions and other main hub regions in the ventral attention network, including insula or dorsal anterior cingulate cortex. So it seems that during drug Q reactivity task, uh, we are tapping uh, ventral attention network, not frontoparietal network. Uh, and we also, and we also check the correlation between frontoparietal connections and uh, changes in uh, behavioral outcomes, um, I mean, uh, craving scores. Uh, first of all, we found that after um, scanning session, after drug Q reactivity task, drug craving uh, was uh, significantly increased across the population. And we also found significant correlation between frontoparietal connectivity and changes in VAS score uh, only in, in the informed uh, montage. I mean, uh, between uh, F3, CP5, and changes in, in, in uh, craving score. And we also found significant correlation between resting state frontoparietal connections and uh, task-based connectivity in the informed montage. And we also checked for the current intensity that we need for, uh, for, for, uh, for our suggested montage. And we found that when we use uh, classic montage, by classic I mean F3P3 or F4P4, and, and there is no significant differences in terms of electric field intensity between frontal and parietal um, regions, but when we use uh, the informed montage by placing electrodes over F3, F4 or um, F3 or F4 and CP5 or CP6, uh, we have significantly higher electric fields in the parietal cortex. Uh, so as you can see in, in the classic montage, uh, we have similar distribution patterns in electric field intensity in the frontal and parietal regions, but in the informed mon montage, we have significant differences between frontal and parietal regions because, because of, for example, specific, um, because of differences in uh, brain anatomy or, or uh, um, skull, uh, skull thickness uh, in, in around CP5 and CP6 locations. And, and we found that we, we suggested that if we want to have a balanced stimulation intensity in both the stimulation sites in dual site TACS, for example, uh, we need to use a smaller uh, current intensity in the parietal cortex. For example, if we 
use a two milliamp in the frontal side, we need to, um, for example, use 1.2 milliamp in the parietal side to have similar electric field distribution pattern. Uh, and we also checked inter-individual variability, and we found that we have um, we have inter-individual variability in terms of the location of the maximum electric field that we use for defining um, uh, seed regions. We also found we have uh, inter-individual variability in terms of the location of um, a significant cluster in the parietal cortex. And if we want to use um, um, individualized um, a stimulation protocol uh, we can we can define seed regions frontal and parietal seed regions based on uh, each person's uh, structural and functional data uh, and we also and check the location of seed regions based on using a sample uh, computation on head model instead of using group level analysis of computation on head models based on our database. And we found that when we use a sample head model, we, um, we have significant overlap between the location of the uh, seed region in the frontal site. And, uh, and, and we, have, we, have, we have overlap between uh, overlap um, between seed regions that we had, that we found, that we defined for uh, sample uh, database and group level uh, analysis of computational head model. Uh, so we suggested that if if um, if we couldn't. Uh, create computation and head models for all of the subjects in our database um, using a sample database can be helpful. Uh, and we also we uh, generalized uh, our pipeline for step-by-step uh, uh, -step, uh, and, and it can be used for other psychiatric disease as well. Uh, and finally, I want to say thank you to all of the co-authors in this uh, paper that helped me to write this paper. And thank you so much for your attention.